everybody, and welcome to Cafe Con Tampa Online. I'm Bill Carlson with uh, my co-host, Della Costa, who's going to introduce our speakers. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Cafe Con Tampa this Friday morning. Today, we have two uh, special speakers, Karen and Kevin Kaczynski. I know I got it right, wrong, correct me. Uh, they're the owner, proprietors, and founders of Penne Rustica. Not only is it a South Tampa institution, it's a Tampa Bay institution. Kevin, tell us how you ended up in Tampa Bay and in the bakery business. Well, Dell, it's, it's kind of a long, long story, but over 23 years ago, Karen and I were living in Boston. And around that time, I kind of got the itch that we both did actually, that we wanted to open up our own business. We'd worked for a number, I worked for a number of restaurants and Karen worked for a number of retailers. And um, we kind of picked Tampa because of Karen's sister living here. We flew down uh, and I think it was um, spring of 1997 to just kind of check out the Tampa Bay area, what competition might be out and about for an artisanal bread bakery like we had planned. And I remember cruising around Tampa and opening up the yellow pages at that time because there wasn't too much internet going on. Um, we were checking out the local competition and at, back then it was Alessi and it was Kalupas there in Dale Mabry right next to Publix on Neptune. And um, after visiting the, the, those, the, those two great bakeries, Kieran and I felt that there was a wonderful opportunity for us just to move down to Tampa. And um, that's kind of where the initial energy started. Well, tell us, what uh, you opened your business. Uh, what was it like the first year? We all know any business is hard. Tell us about your first year. Well, the first year was pretty gosh darn spooky because I remember we opened up July 15th of 1999 and um, the doors were open. And all I can say initially is that tumbleweeds were blowing through. We, we, we had one employee and that one employee in the afternoon who was supposed to be selling bread was basically doing her homework on the counter. And we had one baker in the back and myself. And um, it was just one of those things where we kind of put trust and faith that what we were doing was, was going to work. Um, so that was July 15th, honor abouts of 1999. And then ironically, someone from the Tampa Bay Times kind of stumbled into our little place and um, purchased the mozzarella tomato basil sandwich. And um, her name was Carol. She was a reporter for, for, for the Times. And she said, you know, I want to do a little story on you guys. And at that moment, I was thinking, okay, a little story. It would be like this little side note of Pani Rustica on McDill Avenue. And when the article came out on that, on that weekend edition of the food places, it was like front and center. Because at, at that time, we were um, doing no business. And I thought, well, even though we had this big promo happening in the Tampa Bay Times, it would still be, you know, just an, an average day. But I was wrong. Literally, the phone started ringing off the hook. And um, we, we, we sold out of all of our bread and all of our sandwiches by like one o'clock. And we had to hang a sign on the door that said, close for the day, reopen tomorrow. So the power of the media really does work. So that really kind of catapulted us like from that point on, it just kind of kept going and growing and just the community support just kept being more and more and more. So, but, but, the, really pretty but the interesting thing is in that first year, Dell, because of that first article in the Tampa Bay Times, myself and one other gentleman made over 40,000 sandwiches. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And uh, tell us where the, this bakery was on McDill, because there was a little hole in the wall. I remember it. Yeah, it was um, right pretty much McDill and Bay to Bay. There's a Beef O'Brady's uh, kind of right near that intersection. We were right next door to that. So it was pretty tiny. And then how long were you there before you moved into your present location? We were there for five years, and then we moved to where we are now. Uh, I guess that was 2004. Four. Four. And um, then we expanded where we are now uh, in 2010. We added on our bar and our private dining space. 
So all in all, we've been there, we, we've been in business now for 21 years. It's kind of crazy. Can you tell us, um, I think everybody loves your baked goods. I mean, you all are really famous for that, plus lots of other things. But uh, where did you get the experience to do that? Where did it's, it really is, you, you, I think you called it artisan. It really is art. I just posted this on a couple art blogs because really it, it is kind of, it is the art of baking, right? How did you learn that? It is. So the long and short with that, um, I went to the Culinary Institute of America in upstate New York um, and graduated in 1990. And Karen's career kind of brought us from New York to Connecticut and to Boston. And while I was working in the north end of Boston, this little Italian restaurant called T Tiramia started buying this artisanal bread. And I was so enamored by the quality that I called the bakery and I said, my name is Kevin, I work at Tiramia, but I want to learn how to bake bread. And they said, well, we need some help. You can work X amount of days a week. And um, it was that point in my life where I realized I was kind of like getting really sick of cooking and I wanted to learn more about bread. And um, I was just like a little, a, a sponge. I just learned everything I possibly could about baking bread. And um, you, mentioned, of, you mentioned Boston. I, I lived in Boston for a year and the place we would go in the North End all the time was Mike's desserts or, or Mike's Mike, pastry. Mike's, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of your stuff is like that too, right? I mean, you're the place to go for pastries in South Tampa also. Well, we, we try the, the one thing that we do is we, we put love in everything and we kind of like kind of spread that love to the best of our ability. And Mike's pastry in Boston was somewhat of an inspiration. Um, is one of those places that had a line even at two in the morning and uh, it was really, really quite interesting. But, but as far as pastries go, um, one of the interesting things about Pani Rustica is that, which is why my hair is gray these days, is because we make everything, everything, everything from scratch. And um, there's, there's this constant commitment to quality. And because of my philosophy, you're only as good as your last meal served or your last espresso cookie made or your, or your last loaf of rustic Italian bread. So you, you cookies are the thing that we sell probably one of our biggest categories of pastries because everyone loves a really good cookie, right? <laughs> so you continued to grow and uh, then uh, 2020 came in the pandemic. How did the pandemic affect your business? Well, you know, like for everybody, I think it was pretty scary. Um, and very uncertain. And when it went to the point that it was takeout only, we actually um, we actually closed for like a couple of weeks just to try to kind of restart strategize on how we were going to navigate this new uh, situation that we were all in. And um, you know, we we took some time to figure that out, and we actually wound up building an online store, which we didn't have before. We had a you know just a typical website that just talked about what we did and you know posted our menus but we actually built an online ordering store and that was like really pretty much of a savior for us during that I guess it was like about a month and a half or so when it was all takeout for restaurants and you know the community just figured it out with us too and really supported us it was pretty amazing um, and you know we've just been very careful with all the steps that have been made in terms of what restaurants can do and what the parameters are. And we just kind of kept changing as those parameters changed with, you know, doing the outdoor dining and then allowing the indoor seating. And, you know, it is a hundred percent capacity now, but we're still keeping our restaurant at, we're probably like still around 50 or so. Uh, we just think our guests feel more comfortable coming in our place um, with it not being so crowded and, close to each other and we kind of have like a whole little to-go pickup station that for those people that don't want to dine in it's we're making it very easy for them just to come in and get their food and be on their way and you know our staff has been amazing we we are following all the right protocol in terms of safety and um, cleanliness and you know it's it's been very challenging but we've you know it's just you, you figure it out because that's that's what you have to do. <laughs> what are your most popular items um, during the pandemic and are they different than they were before? 
Uh, well, we kind of had to evolve a little bit. And I, I think this is like where, where our culinary Darwinism kind of kicks in because there, there's a number of items that we just couldn't do anymore um, for, for several reasons, like, like our gelato case. And um, we decided to do these take and bake pizzas in there, these little 10 inch take and bakes that, that, that has really like been a, a significant um, impact to our, to our revenue stream and also take and bake cookies. Um, there's, and that has been something where people buy six at a time and they go home and they bake them themselves. So that it's been a really um, significant change to what we're doing. And, and as far as what, what people have really gravitated toward, I, I, I think we, we really wanted to change the menu up a little bit and um, we, we increased some a pasta influence that I personally love, North End of Boston, et cetera. Um, but that, that, that's taken off really well. And um, people just in general, they wanna eat more healthy. So we're, we're trying to incorporate the salad component in that, but they, they also wanna eat comfortably. They, they wanna go back to what really makes them happy. And, um, and we, we're, we're trying to do that each and every day. You know, walking into Penn and Rusco is like walking into a family home. Uh, what do you do? What's your secret in keeping your employees so upbeat? Everyone there is always pleasant. There's got to be a secret to that. Medication. <laughs> no, you know, I just think that Kevin and I have always had the philosophy of that you need to love where you work. And, you know, we love what we do. And we hope that that translates to all of our staff. And, you know, we're very careful with who we hire, you know, and you, you still never really know like how someone's going to be until they're actually working for you. But, you know, we just, we want people that are doing what they love. And we feel that if you treat people well and they're happy with their job, then that's going to translate not only to their coworkers, but also to the guests too. So. And one thing I try and do, and I, I, I walk around and I try and say hello to every employee in the building yes. the moment that I get there. And the dishwasher, I'll, I'll, I'll flick on the, the, the lights on and off and, and I'll make a weird noise or I'll, I'll, I'll whistle at somebody and um, I'll just go over and acknowledge and say, thank you, you did such a good job yesterday. Um, it really means a lot. I, I, I think that sometimes you, you can over incentivize people. You can, you can pay them $30 an hour, but if they're not happy employees, they're not gonna produce for you. So, um, I think that's pr pr pretty much our installment for success on that. But but it's it's always a battle because you never know um, what's going on in people's lives. If, if they just got an accident prior to coming to work or their, their dog is sick or whatever it is. So you try and be there for them to the best of your ability. Do you, um, do you work baker's hours? Uh, do you start like at five o'clock in the morning? What's the schedule? Well, well, uh, us personally? Yeah. No, <laughs> no. Like, see how tired I am. Yeah, I, I haven't been up at eight o'clock since 1974. But um, no, but, but no, we have we have bakers that that I don't know. I don't know how many employees we have now. Pre-pandemic, we were at like 65 employees. I don't really know exactly where we are. I think we're like about 38 right now. But you know, so we have the the openers, the middle of the day people, and then the closers. So and we probably we fluctuate with what we do, but we definitely are not there at five o'clock in the morning. So we have some people that do that and do it very well. It's like a Tampa Bay Rays bullpen, openers, closers. There you go. <laughs> what do you think of the state of, of baking in, in Tampa and Tampa Bay now? I mean, you, you really brought it to a new level. You mentioned a couple others who, who were famous for baking around here. Um, is, it, is it evolving? I mean, you're training people as they're working for you then too, right? We, we are. I think, um, I remember when we were first writing our initial business plan some 23 years ago, there, there were a number of bakeries that, that were in that plan as competition who are not here anymore. Um, there was a place on North Dale maybe called Valentine's Artisan Bread Bakery um, and a number of others, but one that really stands out is, is Mazzaro's down in St. Pete. Um, and the, those guys were really knew, know how to do an Italian variety of, of bread really, really well. Um, there, there's a couple other players in town now, but um, we make bread the way it should be made in that there's it, our bread production takes 48 hours from start to finish. So a product that you're gonna be actually consuming at our restaurant today on Friday starts on Wednesday. 
in the late afternoon where we make these starters, um, well, whether it's an Italian variety, a French variety, or a sourdough or, or, or a sourdough starter. So that sourdough starter actually started its life in our world back in 1999, and we feed it twice a day, every day, and have done that um, almost 365 days a year. Well, getting back to the pandemic, and we're not trying to be a downer because uh, it's it's uplifting because you've you've evolved into it. Is there any advice that you would like to give uh, decision makers on how to have made your life easier? Uh, you mean like like city officials or you know that kind well, of thing? city, county, state, federal? They all kind of were sending out signals to you all as a business. Uh, you know, I mean, I do think that some of those. Um, like those PPP programs and things like that, that was definitely very helpful. It, it was a little stressful when that was going on because the parameters of that were a little um, tough, but you know, they've eased up on that. And that, you know, I think that's helped a lot of people. Yeah, I really think that for us, like that financial support is probably the thing that really helped us feel not so scared about things that, you know, that they're, even though we've, you know, we, we felt like we had some good stability with how we could try to navigate through this. I, I do think that that was just, just like a security blanket for us a little bit to know that someone else had our, had our back, so to speak. Um, yeah, I do think that keeping things open is really important because, you know, I know some states are reverting back and closing and, you know, that if that happened, that would be very challenging for us. And I don't know how any business can really make it through something like that. So, I do think for the state of Florida, the way they've done things in stages has really helped us keep doing what we're doing. Speaking of government, you all, your, your restaurant is the, is the key site for political events in South Tampa. I, I think from all parties and all kinds of candidates have events at your place and just pack the house. Um, is, that, uh, is that beneficial to you all? And, and, and why do you think you're such a popular place? Well, we're not packing the house these days with those things, unfortunately. <laughs> and probably if we weren't doing, the pandemic wasn't going on, we probably would be having some of those things happening. But yeah, I don't know. I think Kevin and I have always just been so, we've embraced the community. And so, so you know, we, I don't know, how, we, how do you want to say? I, yeah. I think I, we, we, we treat everybody yeah. the same, whether Republican, Democrat, Jewish, Catholic, doesn't matter black, white, it's just they're, they're all part of the, of the community. And and without you being in our world, we wouldn't be talking to you right now. And and some of those political fundraisers have, have just really meant a lot to me. And I, I, I remember Bob Buckhorn, right when he was getting ready to kick off his campaign way, way back in the day, um, he, he did his 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 initial fundraiser or just gathering at our place, and I I will never forget that. It was just so, so such a special moment for me. One yeah. other thing, you've mentioned your breads and you mentioned your pastries, but the other thing that you have is outstanding. Not only your beverages, but your pizzas. Tell us about your pizzas. Well, um, they are all, outstanding. Thank you, Dell. <laughs> we love you for saying that, but I. Thin crust is the way to go. And, and this kind of goes back to my mom, Denise, way back when, when, when I was a kid. And, and her, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but her feeble attempt to make the thin and crispy pizza was just a great memory for me. And I, I took what, what she started and, and, and kind of thought, well, if I could take this dough and put, put it through this dough sheeter multiple times and then, and then bake it in a really 520 degree oven, I could get something really good. But the the basic thing, and I hate to quote Papa John's, is like better ingredients, better pizza. And and the items that we put on our pizza, everything is 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 the best. It's the best quality. We we use a we use a, a mozzarella cheese called Baccio, and it's a low moisture whole milk mozzarella that's just like second to none. And if you give quality. People will pay for it, and um, that pizza itself has has kind of like 
put my kids through college several times over, I'll be honest. Well, we have like the, the Woodstone oven that, that we bake it in is like one of the best on the market. And it's that hearthstone that really lends to that thin crust pizza being so, it's crispy, but it's still like very like manageable to eat. And it's, and, people just love it. And that oven itself, there's a cool story about that. It's actually, the oven weighs five tons. And when we were doing the build out in that location, that oven had to be put on a 10,000 pound forklift and like backed into the place where it is right now. And then we built the kitchen around the oven. So we have a couple of questions from the floor and Dell, by the way, the next time we interview a restaurant, we need to make sure we have food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is from uh, Laura Darrow Frost she says, hi, Kevin and Karen. Uh, let's, let's talk fun stuff. I remember the colored baguette baguettes hand, hanging outside the old store as gender reveals for your babies. How old are they now as business partners tell the story about the site selection for the location move from the little McDill store to the current location. I remember you guys had a list of parameters, um, et cetera. The, the baguette story is super yeah. cool because, <laughs> because Karen, Karen was getting ready to give birth to Chloe and that was, um, she'll be 20 in December. So yeah. So, so what one of my bakers did, they, they took a French baguette, they painted one pink and they painted one blue. And we told our customers that we, cause we didn't know what we were going to have. We told our customers to drive by and we'd be hanging the, the appropriate color baguette out to determine um, male or female. And um, my one baker, Bobby Campos, everyone was gathered because Karen was scheduled to have a procedure to have Chloe. So long and short is Bobby goes out, he takes the blue baguette, he gets ready to, to hang it up and everybody's starting to clap, oh, it's a boy. And then he takes the pink one out and hangs the pink one off for, for, for <laughs> Chloe. So, but it, it was just like one of those things where, you know, the community kind of embraced us for that. But. Yeah. And then our younger daughter, Phoebe is 17. So we did it both times um, for each of the girls. So, um, and then in terms of the site selection for where we are now, that was actually the, the gentleman who is our landlord, he really kind of courted us. Like, you know, I don't even know if we really knew that that was even going to be an option because it used to be a grocery store. I can't remember if it was Simon Schwartz or if there was, if it was something after that, I can't recall, but um, he really loved our place. And he kind of kept, he kept coming to us saying, listen, I have this spot. I can, we can build it out. You guys can expand. And, you know, we just kind of did a little, you know, we didn't really have to do any demographic research because it was right down the road from where we were now. And we had done a lot of research on that prior to opening our first spot. So it really seemed like just the right thing to do because we could actually build a kitchen. Our first spot, we didn't even have a kitchen. It was really truly just a bakery with a little cafe seating. So, you know, this enabled us to have a bigger place, much better parking, um, just kind of really just grow the business. And it just felt like it was right. Everything came together. And we thank Cliff Myers, the owner of the property for helping yeah. us do that. Dell, we're already at the last question. Unfortunately, we could talk forever, but um, go ahead there. Well, this makes me hungry, but just kind of briefly tell us the secret. You have so many good things, but the chocolate espresso brownie, to me, that's a landmark cookie in your bakery. Tell us a little bit about it and why is it so good? Well, I mean, the, it's, it's, it's better ingredients with love and that, that's kind of like the, the secret behind it, but I, I, I don't want to get too much into it, but that's one of our most popular cookies, obviously, but it's one of the, the cookies that takes a lot of effort to make because you have to melt chocolate on one side and then you have to whip eggs and sugar on the other side and combine them together and fold in the pecans and fold in the chocolate chunks and fold in the flour. And then you have to refrigerate it. And then the next day you got to scoop it and then you got to freeze it. And then, and then you bake it with love again. So that's, that's kind of the secret. Okay. If there's anybody out there that doesn't know where Penny Rustica is, let us tell us where you all are located and what your hours are. Okay. So we are at 3225 South McDill. Um, just a little bit south of McDillan Bay to Bay. And um, our website is PontyRustigaBakery.com. So you can get all this information there. And right now our hours are, we're open Tuesday through Saturday. Tuesday, we're 11 to four. And Wednesday through Saturday, we are 11 to nine. Great. And you, you, um, 
you had for a while you had reservations around the bar area. Are you still doing that or is that not happening during COVID? No, we, we are still, we take reservations for dinner because our service styles, um, st we're still doing the same way we always have. Whereas lunch is more of a fast casual. You can, you know, you order, find your table. We bring your food to you. Dinner is full service. The bar actually offers full service, like both for lunch and dinner, but we do take reservations for our dinner service. We don't do it at lunch, but um, for dinner, we do take reservations everywhere. Sorry, we can tell people where they can make reservations. Uh, you can go to our website and there's a link for reservations right there. You can call us or we are on open table. So you can go to open table as well. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thanks Dell for setting up. Obviously Dell loves the restaurant. I love it too, but Dell's really a fan. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we love Dell. He's been with us for probably 21 years. So thank you, Dell. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you all for doing this. And for anybody watching, we do this as a, as a community service. So please hit the share button and like button so your friends will see this. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, please hit the like button, subscribe button also. Thanks so much. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. Dale.